Um, yeah, I, I'm Pavel. I was working on Ayoyo in almost since the beginning, and since uh, Jens conveniently talked through the current state and the basics of Ayoyo ring, it's time to look to the future at least to the one direction, which is zero copy. Um, the story is pretty simple. We have a lot of data, we move a lot of data, and that's why zero copy can actually shine. Uh, reducing CPU usage, saving memory, memory bandwidth, helping with energy, and what's not, name it. Um, and even though there are quite a few different APIs helping with uh, zero copy one way or, no or another, well, what we are looking for is, a, I would say, a nice way to zero copy to avoid copies with, while using a IOU ring. And by nice, I mean we want to use all the feature IOU ring provides. We want to use the common code. We have a lot of infrastructure. And maybe specifically having all the completions, all the events that uh, zero copy can might want to be deliver, delivered right into the, the IOU rings completion queue because if the application is already IOU ring specific, it expects all the events landing into the completion queue and it's quite inconvenient going to some third mechanism like polling something and for example, the recent an interface message zero copy and you would need to go into the error queue. Uh, would be lovely to have all the events in the completion queue. Um, the second goal here is to improve performance when we can. And this quite versatile infrastructure of IOU ring, uh, we have some to offer. I will, I will talk through a, a bit later. And the last one, we eventually want to get to peer-to-peer -to -peer DMA to avoid copies to the system memory when we just transfer data between two devices. Yeah. Um, but starting with something simple, no peer-to-peer -peer for now. Uh, storage I.O. Storage I.O. already can do zero copy, but it's still interesting to see, uh, to have it as an example of how the execution flow might go. This scheme is quite simplified, uh, but in general, uh, the user space issues a request, whether it's some kind of asynchronous request, like the uh, IOU ring request, or just a system call. Then it travels some less, gets to the point where it get skewed for asynchronous execution. Uh, for example, for NVMe, it gets to the hardware and uh, uh, to the driver, and driver asks the hardware to do DMA transfer. Uh, so then execution flow should wait at, until the, the actual transfer completes. And then it, it completes the request and the user space gets its notification back. And this model actually uh, not only for synchronous but also asynchronous interfaces waiting is not necessarily blocking the user space uh, yeah it's quite a simple a straightforward model so i i want to talk through it uh if you take a look at network send uh non-zero copy for now it's a bit different in the sense that uh, it completes the request even before the transfer was actually completed. At, and it's fine, it can do it without fearing that the user space will modify the data in between uh, while transfer is not yet completed just because it does uh, copy all the data inside the kernel. Uh, so there is one interface for for doing zero copy, which I focusing on, is called message zero copy. It does remove uh, the copy step from the last slide, uh, but uh, but it also, as I mentioned, means that after even after the the user space get gets back its completion, uh, it should not really modify the buffers uh, because. Uh, the kernel might still be working and accessing it 
and it would just mean corrupted packets. So the the concept here is that uh, the kernel will eventually add another type of event when the transfer is actually completed and uh, the user space should not uh, modify the data in between. So, yeah, we have, I described two models. The first one is like storage-like model when we get a completion only when the, the full transfer is completed. Uh, it's simple, easy to use, and uh, doesn't need any modification, almost no modification from the user space. Uh, potentially performant because uh, you just get one event and that's it. You don't need extra logic, all the stuff. But, uh, and it actually works pretty well with UDP. But the, the problem came where we want to stream into the TCP because it would mean that you get a completion back only when you get a, an egg back. So it not only depends on the system itself as uh, with UDP, uh, but it can really take long time to get your completion back. And in the meanwhile, you can't really append any data because you don't need even what state the request is, whether it failed or not. And even if not, the, uh, the IU ring can reshuffle them and do some stuff. Uh, and it, even if if not this, there is one technical problem is that it would force uh, uh, to create a new SKBuff object. You can just append to, uh, to the old one because you are changing uh, Ubuffin 4, which I will be talking about a bit later. And on the other hand, there is a two-step model, like in message zero copy, when you split the first completion uh, of request and then deliver another notification telling that the kernel is done with the buffers. Um, it's a bit more complex. Uh, it's not as easy to use, it would need Use space to adapt and add quite a lot of uh, code, but it's more flexible. It works with TCP. Um, yeah, and actually, it's so flexible that it can actually emulate the first uh, uh, the first type, but it won't be as efficient. Uh, and what I'm inclined at the moment is that. Maybe we should have two models in IOU ring for uh, one would work well with UDP and and alike packet based uh, families and the second one with streaming like TCP. Uh, yeah, t taking a step at the idea, uh, starting with the, the, the easiest one. So for both interfaces, we would need to there is a, a structure called UBuff in 4, which is basically a kind of zero copy handler, uh, ref counter handler with a callback. And then uh, all the SKBuff objects which were used with uh, your buffers are free. It calls, uh, it just invokes the callbacks and you get the notification back. Uh, Currently, it lives inside the network layer mostly, but uh, for both scheme, what we would need to do is to pass it from a UU ring. And in my patches, I decided to go with uh, just passing passing inside message header. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think networking guys are too happy about it, but any kind of pre-registration inside the socket would be miserable from the API perspective and would, it would kill any, any performance because it would need some locking, would need some synchronization around it, especially when you change your buffs uh, pretty often. Uh, 
<laughs> and then w when we have this, we, uh, we embed this uBuffin for into a uring request object and just pass it into the network layer. When the net network is done with all the escape buffs and buffers, it will uh, drop down the reference to this object and call the callback, which eventually will post a uh, completion into the completion queue. Uh, so it's simple and uh, pretty easy to implement. And the second one would be a more versatile scheme. First, we would need to not have you both in for per request. We would need to, um, we would rather need to have it in something, uh, something several requests can be attached to. For example, we, here we, we added a, a notion of, uh, notifications and notification slots. Basically, you register an array of slots in, in IOU ring, and each uh, notification slot keeps one and only one uh, notification uh, notifier at the moment. Uh, then, from the user space perspective, you send a bunch of requests. You specify to which notifier attaches this request. They will by slot in uh, by specifying the slot index they will be all will be bound to this uh notify the current notify and then you uh do and then you flash the notification uh there was a couple of ways to flash notifications but doesn't really matter uh once the notification in is flashed uh, the user space is not able anymore to attach new requests to this notification and eventually when uh, the network uh, the network layer is done with all buffers it will post uh, a completion through through the callback um, and and though the user space can't really attach new requests to this uh, flushed notification uh, the notification slot actually replaces it with a new one and you can distinct different completion uh, com completion from different completions by sequence number we keep all the we just keep a sequence number for all, uh, for all notifications of uh, inside a notification slot and also when the user space registers notification slots it register a sort of tag which will be passed back to the user space so user space can actually know what what was the completion is about uh, yeah a, a, apart from just benefit from having a zero copy which is already great we have quite a few different ways to optimize it uh, first of all, it's uh, all the completions delivered into the completion queue. And for example, for message zero copy, it takes uh, some time to poll. Uh, you would need to poll the socket and then go receive message to get an notification. Uh, for TCP, it's budged, uh, but uh, still it takes, sometimes it takes more time than just uh, posting it in the completion queue and the user space can uh, already grab it without any locking. Um, we have a concept of registered buffers in stock true before and we are actually using it here. So when you register a buffer instead of just passing a user space pointer you pass a, like a set of pages uh, and it would mean that we save on uh, page table traversals uh, inside the networking stack because it do, uh, do it do for zero copy. Uh, we don't do MM accounting because it is already in IOU ring. And uh, there is one more optimization to be added in uh, patches. No, uh, they are not yet upstream, I have to notice. Uh, we are getting rid of page RF, RF counting, which is actually shifted to IOU ring, which is have quite a good infrastructure for doing it in a performant way. 
so we we basically attach uh, the pages lifetime to this uboffin for object and guarantee that they're not going to be freed before the the uboffin for is released um there are also nice moments about ring that we have some caching i would i would rather say good caching patterns which we also use for this uboffin for object uh, we have some amortization on the ref counting all the tricks and uh inside um i compared it before with uh message zero copy tool from self test it's maybe not the the most interesting tool to compare with it was probably wasn't written uh, to squeeze any uh, all the performance from it but still uh we did the homework of optimizing the path that stick out for uh, and all those points are in the profiles if you would take a look like polling takes quite a lot of uh, cpu cycles uh page table takes some percents and uh you both in for allocation for udp and it actually allocates one for each udp request uh, usually uh takes quite a, quite few cpu cycles so yeah at least we optimized all of this and testing U udp we, we are getting what we would expect to get uh with uh, large payloads like 4000 bytes it's quite a decent performance swing just because zero copy and if you take a, a look at the profiles it's like uh it's about 20 maybe more uh, percent taken by copy string and clear page all the stuff uh, the smaller payload size we get less uh, benefit uh, and i have to say that all three three cases copy zero copy and zero copy plus flash all are you hearing with some with all performance features uh, enabled uh, the first one is just non-zero copy in uh, normal sense. The second one is zero copy and the third one is zero copy and we do flash, uh, flash the notification for every single request. So, uh, flashing is pretty expensive here. We have some ways to, uh, optimize it in the future. Uh, yeah, but it's still in experimental branches we'll test it out later and as a smaller as a payload size we get less and less performance and at 600 bytes it's somewhat on par if we don't do notifications i mean non-zero copy and zero copy zero copy obviously add some additional overhead uh but if we do notification flashing it's an integrated performance so we will work on it a bit, but uh, I wouldn't expect 600 bytes be any viable for zero copy. Uh, hopefully, we can get some profit from 1500 bytes. And the same stuff, the same testing with uh, Netflix dummy device. Uh, it lacks the, the most of bottom uh, half of the drivers, uh, DMA mapping actually transfers. So kind of uh, an idea an ideal wor world when uh, the the net uh, the networking card performs uh, instantly yeah um that's what we have and talking about a bit um, about our plans we want to get to peer-to-peer -peer at some point and play with dma all the stuff um we would first need to get um, a concept of target fd when we register buffers so we can pre-allocate and s prepare our buffers Jens played before with this idea for networking stack like uh pre he was preparing uh dma mappings in in advance for a block layer and then passing down the layers 
it was quite a win, but we want a common infrastructure for all the stuff and share, uh, and we want to use it uniformly, at least from the user space perspective between networking and uh, block layer and not only. And then uh, we would need to uh, want to get peer-to-peer -peer DMA. We played with it before. It was my colleague actually uh, implemented a hacky solution, tested it. It's pretty great from the per performance perspective, uh, especially when you have lots of devices. Uh, but um, nothing yet too clear we would need to talk through the actual solution. The current idea is that it would be lovely to have peer-to-peer -peer DMA inside the networking layers, and but it would need network to support peer-to-peer -peer DMA, and we, we would need actually to figure out how to make it any feasible from the networking point of view. And probably use DMA buff as as a front-end solution for registering buffers inside IOU ring so we can uh, take a PCI, for example, memory and uh, register it inside IOU ring and the interface should look like we just specify the right buffer uh, when sending a rec IOU ring request and it just transfers as you want. Uh, uh, yeah. The, the API here is uh, not the final, of course, it's just a quick stop. Uh, uh, it will be a bit different, but uh, yeah. And the last slide is zero copy receive. Uh, and without Without protocol support, they don't have any too bright ideas. There are some solutions like TCP zero copy receive, which uh, maps uh, kernel pages into the user space memory when it gets some. And uh, there are solutions like ZCTAP and uh, XDP. And I would say the current sentiment is to try to integrate something like ZC tab into your urine, make the interfaces right, uh, uh, tie it into the infrastructure like uh, completion delivery, and uh, try to see what, what it will look like. But all the solutions have some limitations because it. Uh, it requires some hardware support, like uh, header splitting, some steering rules, all the stuff. Um, and probably we will be, and this tab solution would probably look like provided buffers that Yan talked before, but uh, so it would need additional uh, re ring a map to the user space and user space can provide additional buffers uh, and the kernel when it gets some more memory just grabs the next uh, buffer to fill and goes on. So yeah, that's the current plans, uh, the current state. I will be sending the next uh, the next version of the send patches pretty soon. Uh, just have done it today, but uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. That's all. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, so why would you need header split in the XDP approach if your application doesn't care if it gets the headers? Would that be sufficient or is that just? Uh, yeah, not for XDP, but rather for, for ZC type solution because it does uh, the header processing inside the kernel. Got it, thanks. And also, uh, ZC type was aiming for for peer-to-peer -peer as well, so 
when it gets data, it uh, tries to copy headers uh, to the user space memory, but copies data to a PCI device or whatever memory. So, yeah, that's where you need header splitting as well. Uh, I think you probably shouldn't care too much about hardware limitations, for example, in, uh, regarding header splitting or whatever, because what really matters is to provide uh, a good infrastructure uh, which can overcome all the li these limitations, even uh, if it comes with a cost, but uh, that hardware will be able to adopt later for example, uh, I would really like to be able to receive uh, only a TCP payload from a NIC uh, in user land to parse uh, HTTP requests or whatever. It definitely requires that headers and payload are split, and we know that there are a lot of exceptions to this uh, with uh, reorder packets or whatever, but for the majority of the streams, uh, it will be okay. And if we make it possible for NIC to uh, split the data and say, okay, this is linear data, I can put all my payload here, and that 99% uh, of the case, uh, the application gets uh, uh, this payload in zero copy, properly ordered, etc. Uh, it's already a win. And I think that as long as we focus on uh, what the hardware is capable of, uh, we will probably not provide the hardware, the infrastructure that it needs to do this properly. You see? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if I remember correctly, uh, this setup was working only for Melnax uh, NICs for at the beginning and probably still does. And it has some like specific code for Melnox drivers because it needs, uh, a, it actually allocates a hardware queue from the NIC. So it needs some additional ha hardware dependent code. So yeah, uh, probably it will get more support in the future if I ever get, uh, if something like this even gets immersed at some point. Great. I think that's it. <laughs>